Hey guys, we are back with some more New York Islanders franchise mode, and in this one, we are going to start the year eight offseason. Not what I wanted to be saying in this one, as we just couldn't get past the Carolina Hurricanes. They were a little too much. Besides, game number two really dominated us. 2-1 overtime loss there in game number five. 6-2 loss, 6-2 loss, 2-1 overtime win, 3 nothing loss. So it's, yeah, just domination by the Hurricanes, really. And there clearly needs to be some changes here in the offseason because if we couldn't get it done with this team, then there's something wrong. So let's get up to the offseason, and we will continue on. But first... We're going to take a look at the progress reports, as there is a certain draft pick of ours that has made his way up to NHL level in one year. That would be Mikhail Erzberg. He's an 81 overall now, medium elite, and we just drafted him last year in the third round. 2025, third round pick, 66 overall, and he's now at 81 so he will definitely be slotting into the roster next year. It's just a matter of where in the lineup does he play. And also notable, Parasadine. He's a 79 overall now. We drafted him, I believe, in the yeah, sixth round of 2024. One thing that we really struggled with this year was penalty kill and defense in general in the playoffs after the Columbus series. Mainly in the Carolina series, actually. So... What I'm thinking we need is a top-end defensive forward. That's what we've been missing this whole time. It really has been. Because when you take a look at all of our top forwards, I mean, Bennett Strite, offense. Matt Burzell, offense. Wallstrom, offense. Mueller, offense. Ragnarsson, offense. All these guys are dedicated to goal scoring. And then when you take a look at our back end as well, Ghost, offense. Riley, Partially defense, partially offense, but mainly offense. And then Duret is our only defensive defenseman. But we don't have any true top-end defensive forward. You have Bo Horvat, uh, and he's good. But he's clearly not good enough because the penalty kill, just as usual, struggled last year. And it's kind of what we've been missing this entire time without Taves. And I believe at the time that we got Taves, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe he was an 87 overall when we got him out of free agency. So we're missing, we are clearly missing that Jonathan Taves type player. And that's what we're going to try to go for out of this free agency. And if we're getting that type of player, I'm just, sorry, there's just no chance that we're going to be able to hold on to Oda. Absolutely none. Because they're going to, whatever player we go after, if they're 88 overall or above, they're probably going to want at least 9 or 10 mil. <laughs> so, and given the amount of big contracts we have already, we really can't afford to give out a contract to Jay Soda. And Ragnarsson is on a $6 million deal as well. He might be considered trade bait at this point, especially with Ayersberg coming in, you know. And he's mainly an offensive guy, and we're looking to build up the defense on the offensive core and... He might be one of the guys going out, but we will get to that when the time comes, and that time is not right now, as we are currently in the middle of the postseason. So we're going to send out to the draft here, and see you guys in a second. And your Stanley Cup champions are the Tampa Bay Lightning, and the Calder Cup champions are the Rockford Ice Hogs. So that'll do it for the postseason of year number eight. Let's move into the offseason now, and it should be quite an interesting one, as... We're going to get up to the draft here. And here is the draft lottery. Montreal will get the first overall pick, followed by Philly, Dallas, New Jersey, Washington, Anaheim, Winnipeg, Colorado, Calgary, St. Louis, Boston, Ottawa, the Rangers, L.A., and Florida. And central scouting. Yep, player retirements. Let's check this. And Ovi is now retiring. Kopitar, Stamkos, Wheeler, Pacioretty. Little, Petrangelo, Stepan, Perron, Atkinson, Stahl, Gagne, Johnson, Bakker, Hoffman, Eller, Riley Nash, Wilson, 
Vlasic, Myers, Gardner, Brody, Saboka, Petrie, Eakin, Roussel, Sezikis, Bogosian, Shen, and in terms of, not the Ducks, but in terms of goaltenders, we have Varlamov, Mason, Bernier, Talbot, Reimer, Neuvirth, Pavlik, Copley, Mazenik. All right. So that'll do it for retirements. And Stamkos is now a scout, apparently, apparently for the Lightning. And now the draft. But first, we're going to check the awards. <laughs> I actually wrote it down, so I didn't forget this time. So here we go. Stanley Cup goes to the Tampa Bay Lightning. President's Trophy, Carolina Hurricanes. And it was San Jose versus Tampa Bay in the Stanley Cup final. Player awards, Art Ross goes to Elias Pettersson. Art Memorial, Philip Zadina. Norris goes to Ghost. So we got him later on in the season, but he still gets the Norris Trophy for your New York Islanders. Uh, Lady Bing, Gillius Pedersen. Calder goes to R. Giroux on the Avalanche. Conn Smythe goes to Andre Vasilevsky. Vesna, John Gibson. We missed him. Jennings, John Gibson. <laughs> Bill Masterton. K. Soderstrom on the Rangers. Uh, Selkie. Pedersen, Ted Lindsay Award, Philip Zadina, Maurice Richard, Andrei Sveshnikov. So there you go. There are the awards. Uh, let's check the player stats from the playoffs real quick, because I don't believe we got to in the last one. Cezek and Mueller had eight points. Wallstrom and Strite at seven. Rackerson and Commodore had six. Farabee and Hines had four. Pekka Barzell had two. Pouliot, Ghost, Riley, Horvat all had one, and then Baptiste didn't play. Durat had nothing, Otterson had nothing, Montour, Severson, Mueller, Mirko Mueller, all with none. Plus minus, highest was Mirko Mueller and Mike Commodore with plus four. Shots, yep, Wallstrom with 45. Faceoffs, uh, Mueller won 58.5, Pouliot won 55%, Barzell 54.7, same for Cizek, Horvat won 50, uh, 48.5. Five. It's unusual for him. And then Commodore, 48.8 on 82. Hits, 21 for Wallstrom, 20 for Mirko Mueller. And then takeaways to giveaways, we have Pekarainen, who was even. Uh, Cizek, good. Commodore, very good. Strike, even. Riley, very good. Horvat, good. Ragnarsson, even. Montour, eh. Wallstrom, eh. But he got offense. Faraby, good. Hines could have been better. Otterson could have been better. Durat, actually very good. Severson could have been better. Ghost, mm. Pouliot, good. Mueller could have been better. Mueller also could have been better. Barzell, I mean, he had no giveaways, so I, I guess that's good. One takeaway, though, in nine games. So that's kind of below par for where he usually is in terms of takeaways. Uh, no fights in the playoffs. And then goaltenders. Yeah, I mean, Hutchinson, 9-11 save percentage. The majority of that falloff is from the second round. Partially because his team couldn't score for him and also because his team couldn't play defense for him. Because he had 206 shots against in the, the playoffs. He saved 20 of them. Or uh, he's <laughs> not saved 20 of them. He, he let in 20 shots. <laughs> but... Still, he had a pretty solid playoffs, of course, other than the mainly game four and games three and four were a little rough, of course, but that was just a total team collapse. And then Oda, in the one full game that he played, did very well. He only let in two goals, but there's just, with, with the uh, addition of a, a top-end defensive forward that we're hoping to get, there's just no chance that we're going to be able to hold on to Oda. So Hutchinson is the man moving forward. I'm calling it right now because, I, again, I know for a fact if we're getting that top-end forward, defensive forward, that there's no way we're going to be able to hold on to Oda. Let's check the Miners playoffs. So it appears that the Sound Tigers, they actually went pretty far. So Tuominen with a 20-point playoffs. Pretty solid. Lynn as well. With 17 points. Forrest Backer Carlson with 16. Uh, Maddox Chung with 14. Kolesnik with 11. 
And let's see, Nicholas Berry with eight. He's looking pretty promising. Dietz with seven. And everyone else, yeah, okay. So now at this point, we'll get to the draft. I don't think we'll be making any moves at the draft in terms of trades. Any trade that I want to make is going to be in free agency. Unless we can get something for Oda, like a top five pick, but I don't think that's happening. So let's just view the draft class really quick. We have a medium elite Grand Pierre right here and a medium elite Nasland. Stefan Nasland. Ooh, Nasland looks pretty good. Pin him for sure. Grand Pierre as well. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's not as NHL ready, it doesn't appear, but, you know, still both medium elites going late. So we'll definitely try to pick them up. All right, so let's go into the draft and see what it brings us. So. Again, I'm not going to be making any trades at the moment. Anything that we're doing is going to be coming out of free agency, at least in terms of trades or signings. So, some to user pick. We're picking 25th. And I'm not going to bother with any of these guys here. I mean, unless Naslin's good, no. No, I'm going to go straight for the potential. And I think we're going to go for Stefan Naslin. Yeah, he looks pretty good. So, welcome to... The New York Islanders, Stefan Nasland. Getting more snipers. <laughs> One of the things we do not need. So now there's Grand Pierre. He's not going until much later. So I might be able to sneak something else here. Barry Powell, we don't know much about him. Whiting, eh, top nine. There's some low elites here. Chris King. Popov. Then Eve Flurry, and he's a he's actually a two way forward as well. We need some of those, <laughs> so he might not be a bad pick. He's not good at face offs, for being a center, but he is a low elite, and he is a defensive forward. So yeah, I think we'll just go with our team need here. We will take Eve Flurry, welcome to the New York Islanders. There is Lynn back. I'm not even going to look at the low top fours at this point. Low top six. I mean, unless they have good grades. Marcel Grandpierre being in the draft at 126. And a medium elite. That's kind of hard to pass up. So we'll take him. Welcome to the New York Islanders. Okay, so I had all these guys pinned here. Erickson, Blaine... Niederberger, Hendrickson, Hanzus, but this guy here, Nikolai Zykov, he's got an A- minus for shooting already, uh, and uh, I know he's an offensive forward, <laughs> but all these guys are going extremely late, so it doesn't really matter what order we take them in, so I'll just take the guy who's most NHL ready first, Zykov, welcome to the Islanders, next we'll be taking Frederick Erickson, two-way forward, so Pro maybe a defensive board. We don't know exactly, but he is six foot three. Got good size to him, and he's a gem, and he's low elite. So we'll take him. Round number four, we'll be taking Sean Blaine, defensive defenseman, low elite, gem. Why not? Round five, we'll be taking Maximilian Niederberger, because again, low elite gem. You can't go wrong. We'll take him, and he's a grinder. So maybe he'll do something for us defensively. Round six. I think it's just going to be one of those other low elite guys because that's really all that's on the board at this point. I mean, even the medium top six that's available, not really liking him. Plus, he's an offensive forward. And again, we don't really need any more of those than we already have. So we'll just take Hendrickson first and then Hazus. Sure. There you go. I mean, true. He is an offensive forward here, Hendrickson, in a sniper, but he's got the low elite. And those can turn out to be something. And then Philip Hanzus, welcome to the New York Islanders. And that should be it for the year eight draft, as yes it is. So welcome to the Islanders. Nasland, Fleury, Grandpierre, Zykov, Erickson, Blaine, Niederberger, ha Hendrickson, and Hanzus. All right, so let's get to the re-sign stage now. This should be a fun one. And by fun, <laughs> I mean we're probably going to have to release... Uh, quite a few people here. Contract years for the scouts. We gotta do this first. 
So I'm not keeping anyone below a B. So Sim can go. But everyone else. Yeah, everyone else will be signed. So we need a scout for the U.S. Central in the scout free agency. But other than that, I will get all these guys signed. All right, so let's see what the damage is. And we have a cap space of 4.7. Yeah, there's no chance. <laughs> no chance we're signing Oda. And we may not even be able to get all of our depth back either. That is not good. So we're going to... Uh, presuming Baptiste... Yeah, he doesn't want a two-way. I don't think so. Free agency for you. Parasadine, we will sign. He's a prospect. He's good depth. Cheap depth at that. Klapik. Let's see. Mueller. Marco Mueller, 2.5. Can't hold on to him. No way. Kyle Wood. If he wants a two-way, I'll give him... No. Release. Can't afford any of these guys. And then Reardon, I guess. Yeah, sure. Henroth. There you go. Clapperton. There you go. Then goaltenders. Yeah, Oda. <laughs> no chance. 9.6. 4.7 available. Not happening. UFA's Valbalainen doesn't want to resign. Get out of here. And the one prospect we will sign is Mikhail Erzberg here. 81 overall. Welcome to the Islanders. So now that leaves Oda along with Ottoson, Hines, Pekarainen, Pouliot, and that's it. So out of these four, I think my... Order of priority would be Ottoson and Hines for sure. Because Hines had a breakout year. And then Ottoson, one of our most physical guys. So, Ottoson, how much does he want? 2.8. Hines wants 2.8. Jeez. Pekorainen wants... No way. You kidding me? He wants 5.2. He's, he's probably grown it a lot, but... We can't give him that. There's no way. Yeah, he wasn't even that productive. He had 33 points. I'd rather sign Hines for cheaper. Yeah, he couldn't. I mean, he has a great ratio. But that's about all he does great. He doesn't hit. He doesn't take face-offs. He doesn't get as much point scoring as someone like Doug Hines. He's expendable for the amount that he wants. So, there's no point in keeping him. Pouliot, uh, 1.3... I'd rather have Otterson and Hines than Pouliot, so I think we're going to be trading him as well. Now, what if I got the years down on Doug Hines? Okay, so he wants less if we give him less years. So if I got him down to two years, I might be able to get him down to 2.5 here. And then if I got Otterson down to if I could get Otterson down to 2.4 what if I gave him both one year deals then I might be able to get Hines down to 2.4 as well it's still cutting it close but I might be able to do that because I would prefer to get both these guys back so what if I gave Otterson I'm going to try to lowball these guys for right now I'm not expecting Otterson to take this, but we're going to see if he does because we're in a tight spot right now <laughs> and we need to low ball as much as possible here. So one year for Hines as well, 2.4. We'll see if he takes it because after this, I think we have like 20,000 in cap space left. <laughs> so there's no chance we're signing anybody else. And if we're signing that elite defensive forward, we're definitely going to have to move some salary out. And that's going to be scary. So let's see who signs. Uh, Scout. Reardon. Klapik. All these guys. I saw a couple of reject rejections. Rejections in there. English is hard. So let's see. UFAs. None. None. Good. RFAs. Ottoson and Pekka Reinen. So... Hines signed, Otteson didn't. And then as far as goaltending, yeah, I mean, we didn't even offer him. We're, we're just going to have to tender qualifying offers to Pouliot, Pekarainen, and Oda. There's no way around it. 
So we still have 3.2 remaining in cap space. So that means Autosyn, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we should be able to re-sign Autosyn here. Yeah. We'll definitely be able to re-sign Autosyn. I'm not concerned about him now. But as far as Pouliot, Pekorainen, and Oda go, they're just, they're trade bait at this point. It's it's absolutely necessary to trade them. And, you know, you got Erzberg coming in. And you have potentially Parsadine coming in as well. And he probably more than likely will at this point with the amount of guys going out again due to, you know, the cap issue. So uh, hopefully Otterson signs. And once we get him signed, we're going to go over to June 30th so that we can tender qualifying offers to all these guys. And that'll be about it for the resign stage. Uh, Otterson rejected. Okay. So I'm not going to give up on him yet because we still kind of lowballed him a little bit there. So if I went 2.7, he should accept that, right? Right? Hopefully. <laughs> I don't want to go too much higher. I mean, I'll give him what he's asking for if it comes down to it, but not anything more than that, for sure. Uh, scout. And there you go. Okay. So now let's get up to the 30th, and we will enter qualifying offers. Yeah, 1.5 remaining in cap. I want to have a little bit of breathing room. So I don't think I'm going to offer up Puglia either. So, yeah, we'll just qualify, qualify, and qualify. All right, let's get to July 1st. I'm not looking forward to it. <laughs> I'm really not. All right, so July 1st. Let's see who's in free agency. Any good defensive forwards here? Uh, pff, of course, Jack Hughes. <laughs> oh, ooh. Speaking of which... <laughs> the guy who pretty much shut us down in Carolina is now available in free agency. Martin Natchez. He might not be a bad one to go after. Because he is a defensive forward. He's got the face-offs up there. He's got the hits. He's got the ratio. He blocks a few pucks per season as well. And he gets points. So if we're really looking for a serious top-end defensive forward... I think Martin Natchez would be the one. Let's see any other guys here. Yeah, Yanni Pekka-Ryan. It just drops off so fast after that. Yeah, Clem Costine. It drops off fast after Kevin Fiala. So really, this free agency is about Jack Hughes, Patrick Laine, Martin Natchez, and Kevin Fiala. And then in terms of goaltenders, you have Jay Soda, of course. But he will be traded very soon. So, what to do from here? Well, we don't have too much breathing room in terms of cap. And in order, to, at this point, in order to get Nechas, or Nechas, however his name is pronounced, we would have to trade some significant salary out. He's looking for $9 million at least, I think is what I saw. But we have to be prepared to offer him $10 mil. So, who do we move out if we're going for Natchez? I think, I would think Ragnarsson would be one of them, just because he's making almost six mil. And at this point, he's probably going to be replaced by Mikhail Ayersberg, who we don't know if he's going to be ready for the second line yet. But based on the growth that he had during the season, I'm expecting him to be around an 84 by the start of next season, or at least by mid-next season, so... We're really going to have to bank on that. And then th there's, of course, the risk of Natchez not even signing with us. So even if we trade Ragnarsson and whoever else we decide to shave off the salary of, maybe Cizek, maybe Horvat, uh, maybe, maybe Commodore. So regardless of what we do here, it's going to be risky. <laughs> But I think that's a risk we have to take at this point. So first thing first thing is first. Let's trade away our RFAs. Because we know that, you know, we're not going to be getting any players back for them. Because it's it's make us or bust at this point. He, he's the only guy who I want out of free agency. He honestly is. Because he would definitely, definitely help out our penalty kill. And that's desperately needed. 
So, Oda. Let's see. Let's try to find a good... Uh, good suitor for him to go to. Dallas looks like a team that could use him. And here's the reason. They have a lot of cap. They have good centers. They have good forwards in Fallon, Sagan, Gurianov, Jones, Delandria, Gabarik, Otterize, Spooner, Hansen. And then on defense, they have Haskinen, Dumba, Hanka, Orlov, uh, Jinning. So all they're missing is a goaltender. So I think this would be a very good team for Oda to go to. So we're going to see what we could get out of Dallas here. Probably a first round pick. Oh yeah, definitely more than a first round pick. <laughs> so let's see if we could get some rookie skaters back here as well. And I know it says they're a rebuilder, but really all they need is a goaltender. That's all they need at this point. They have Haskin in, they have Xavier Fallon. Uh, they still have Tyler Sagan for a couple more years. They have Gabrick now. Uh, it's looking for good for the Dallas Stars going forward. So I think they could afford to give up first and a couple prospects for a goaltender like Oda. For sure. You know what? They really don't have any prospects who I'm interested in. I mean, maybe this Marshan guy who's a grinder. He might be able to fit into our system at some point. But then again, he is unsigned. So I'll take the first for next year off. Or the year after this upcoming year anyway. So Oda for a first Marshan and a second proposed trade. Rejected. So that first wouldn't have worked anyway. I'll put a third on instead of a second. Because they actually want to give up the third. So Oda for a first Marshan and a third. We'll go through. Nope. All right, so. I've decided to settle for Joel Wild here. He had some pretty solid numbers in his first year in the AHL. 45 points. I believe he's on the first line. 122 hits. Solid ratio. So, we'll try him. And clearly, I could get a lot more for Oda. But considering that he's unsigned, that kind of lowers his value a little bit. And... We just need to get him off the team so that we don't have to worry about it. So proposed trade. Rejected still. She's uh -huh. <laughs> Wow. That first round pick is holding a lot more value than I anticipated. You know what? I could get a lot more from him. Yeah. Florida. They're a pretty good team as well. They don't have a goaltender either. But defensively, they have Sweeney, who's an up-and-coming defenseman. Matheson, Dermott, Vatanen. Krug, Pissick, and then forwards. I mean, you have so many forwards here. You have Vasunov, Barkov, Mato, Glenny, Hurdle, Tippett, Yakupov, Trocek, Gruel. They look like a team that has a future. So I'll take their first. I'll take their second. I'll take another first. And I'll try to get a prospect in there as well. It makes sense for Florida to pay this much as well because they are getting an established goaltender which they need and they are it would put them directly into contention so i'm gonna see if we can get oda for a first well two firsts a second and haynes at 50 percent of his salary retained because he looks like a potential nhl forward uh, good depth for next year and he's cheap if we could get him on this Retain salary deal. So, will this go through? No. Okay. We'll take off the second. Proposed trade. Objected still. Okay. We'll take off the first. Put a second back on. Will this work? Trade accepted. There you go. So, Jay Soda. Now a member of the Florida Panthers. We got cheap depth in return. And we got a first and a second round pick. Not too shabby for a return for a goaltender who we were not able to sign. So, and now, of course, <laughs> they want to trade him for some odd reason. I don't know why they would, but, um, I mean, maybe they're short for cap. Yeah, I mean, true, they're short for cap. They are pretty short for cap in terms of what they would need to sign him, but, you know, they have enough wiggle room where they would, you know, be able to trade one guy and then be able to sign him. So, that's a solid trade, in my opinion. And now, would be Pouliot and Pekka Need to find teams for them. 
So I'm thinking of rebuilder for these guys, both young, both able to contribute at a decent level. And the Ottawa Senators appear to be in rebuild mode still. <laughs> so let's see what their situation is here. They appear to have a future in goal. They have Carlson still. They have Shabbat. Other than that, not really too much of a defense. What about Fords? Yeah, they could use Pekoran and Pouliot. Because a lot of their forwards, too, are, are pretty old. Nemestikov, Bjugstad, uh, Pitlick. So, yeah. I think this is a trade the Senators would do. I'll take a second, and I'll take your third. Pouliot and Pekoranen for a second and a third will go through. Yes, it will. And again... Those players are unsigned, so they have less value now. So, I think we're getting a pretty good deal out of that. Now, when it comes to trading away salary in order to get Natchez, what do we do? I'm not going to make those trades now. I want your guys' feedback in the comments. This is a huge decision. Natchez wants 9.1. I think we're going to have to go up to at least 9.5 for him. So, I'll go to the contract screen here and show you guys our current situation. What contracts would you guys say we move out in order to get Natchez? We need a player like Natchez badly because he could help out our penalty kill in a big way. We don't have a single defensive forward in our top six, and he would be that guy. So, here's our contract situation. Berzell, Wallstrom, Mueller... Riley, Durat, Strite, Ragnarsson, Commodore, Cizek, Ghost, Horvat, Severson, Montour, Ottoson, Faraby, Hines, Erzberg, Sedin. We're not trading these guys. They're way too valuable for the uh, amount of salary they carry compared to their overall. But really, anyone else who's not a rookie, who's not on a rookie contract, let me know about. We obviously have to keep Hodgkinson, but other than that, you know, let me know. I don't think I would want to trade Burzell, Wallstrom, Mueller, none of our stud guys, you know, maybe someone like Ragnarsson or Commodore or Cizek or Horvat or Ottoson, right? Let me know. I'm stopping it here. So who do we trade to get in order to get... To free up the cap in order to get Natchez. Let me know, and I'll see you guys in the next one.